folks, Zapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and we're bringing you another Space Empires 4X video. I don't remember what part it is. It's been a week or two since I've played, probably yeah, about two weeks, so it might be part three or part four. Um, I'm not done wrapping up, so I said I'd do every every even-numbered turn. I'm not done with, with uh, turn number eight yet. However, I just want to, we've got, so in uh, Sadie, or I believe it's Sadie, let me double check. Yeah, Sadie, so the Green Empire, in uh, her exploration, she revealed a doomsday machine, and I believe it was right here. And the doomsday machine destroyed that scout, which that was no surprise. And the doomsday machine has move towards the nearest planet so part of the rules for it, it moves towards the nearest planet or asteroid belt or ship so this there was another scout over here the scout decided wisely to kind of go back to the home system there was a planet here and there was a planet here and the doomsday machine went ahead and destroyed it and basically turned them into asteroid fields now sadie has only had basically one turn to mount any kind of response. So she hastily built a bunch of ships, um, created a fleet, we'll call that Fleet Katana. The Doomsday Machine has moved towards this planet. Fleet Katana moved in to intercept, so this is this is the Doomsday Machine, and this just there's a this just represents there's a combat here in that particular planet. Normally you're supposed to use there's a little um, cardboard chit right there so you got the battle chit you put the battle chit wherever the battle is and then you move all the ships over to the um combat mat so that's what we have right here so you can't see it too well so we've got the doomsday machine i made a i made a I have a homemade chit to represent the stats for the doomsday machine there's a couple other things that that they incorporate which i don't need to squeeze on there i kind of have written down right there but here is Fleet Katana. So we have the um, Sadie's flagship. We have six destroyers and we have one scout. And that's about the best that she could do. Sadie could build on her one build turn before um, that Doomsday Machine got there. Now, in the rules, that it says that the Doomsday Machines can't... They can't enter a, a side's home system. So... If you can, if you know anything about Space Empires on the Space Empires hex map, there's a yellow border that basically outlines, well, for each color. So there's a yellow border, there's a green border on the map, and then red and blue, obviously. So there are borders that are actually written or printed on the game map that outline your home system border. And it says that doomsday ships cannot enter home systems. I'm going to go ahead and skip that rule and say that a doomsday machine can just do whatever the heck it wants. Because after all, it is a doomsday machine. So anyway, Sadie threw together whatever that she possibly could, which basically amounts to, you know, six destroyers and your flagship and, and a puny little scout and we're going to try to do some combat we're going to try to kill this doomsday machine so let's see if we can basically how a combat works is you have so you got the first number is your well actually the letter is your class it's basically how fast you are so the higher up in the alphabet or the the closer to a you are the faster you're the faster you are so we've got the flagship, which is a B class. So they will fire first because the doomsday machine is C. So all Bs fire first. And then, or excuse me, it would go A's, fire first, then B's, then C's, and then you get the picture, right? So, and then what you have is you have your first number, that's your attack value. Your second number is your defense value. And then your third number is your hull size. That's how many hits you can take. So we have the Thunder Child here, which has an attack value of four. So basically what you do is you subtract the opponent's defense. So in this case, we have the Doomsday Machine. So the Doomsday Machine's defense is two. So you subtract two from 
the attack value of whatever attacking ship, and that's what you have to roll under. So four minus two is a two. So I have to roll a one or a two with the Thunder Child to be able to cause one damage to the Doomsday device or ship or whatever you want to call it. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to see how this combat plays out. And then I will continue with um, doing the rest of turn eight, including all the purchases and everything. And then I'll do basically a recap of turn seven and turn eight. But I wanted to give you a little glimpse of, hey, we've discovered something in the galaxy or the universe, whatever you want to call what setup we have right now, that there's more than just these four players. There's other bad actors out there. But, and I also wanted to, to highlight a little bit of the combat. Combat's pretty simple. So let's go with the Thunder Child. We need a two, a one or a two to, to cause one damage to this Doomsday machine. So we got a one. So now we put one damage marker on there. So the Doomsday machine has a hull size of three. So if we can cause two more damage to that Doomsday machine, then we will destroy it. All right, so now the Doomsday sh Machine, because it is C, so we'll go ahead and tilt you to show that you fired. Now the Doomsday Machine will fire back. It gets two attacks. I'm going to decide. I don't want to be a total jerk and try to take out the uh, flagship in one shot, so I'm going to go for um, the Destroyers. And then, you know, there's a little bit of strategy involved here. So because combat is not simultaneous, if I can take out two Destroyers, that's two less attacks that they will have back. So there's a little bit of strategy. You can attack whoever you want, but you know, we're going to say that this doomsday machine is somewhat sentient. So he's going to recognize that, Hey, these guys are getting ready. They're powering their weapons up and we'll try to go ahead and take them out before they get a chance to fire or at least two of them. So doomsday, the doomsday machines attack value is nine, two attacks at nine. Um, the destroyers have a defense of zero. And I believe, let's look, the destroyers, they actually have a defense of one because I purchased that technology a while ago. So I need an eight or lower with two attacks to take out these destroyers. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So took out two destroyers. So that six goes down to a four. There we go. So there are four destroyers left. So that's two less attacks that will be that will go on the Doomsday Machine. So we'll go ahead and do that. Flip you to show that you've been used, even though it doesn't matter because I'm going down the row. If I have more ships on this map, on this display, then it'd probably make more sense to mark them as used. But we're going to get four rolls at two or lower. And it looks like nobody was good. None of these guys are, are good shots. And now we have the scout who is the last one. So it looks like you need to get a one. Let's see if we can roll a one and a six. So now we go into the um, next round of combat. All right, so let's go with the... Can't, I had to stop and look something up, so I don't remember if I did the scout, but we need, I think we need a, I think I rolled, but any, you know what, we'll do it again. All right, so the scout actually got lucky. You know, I probably already did that attack, but we'll give these guys every advantage that they can get. So we only need to do one more damage. So now what we'll do is we'll do another round of combat. Now we could do retreats or anything like that, but you know what? Sadie sees this doomsday machine as an existential threat, so we're not going to back off. So now we go with the Thunder Child again. So we need a two or lower. That's a nine, so that's nothing. Um, the Doomsday Machine gets two attacks. Basically eight or lower. And a zero is actually a ten in this game, so that was a miss. So we took out one Destroyer. Now we have three Destroyers. And we need a two or lower. And, oop, I thought that was a one, but it is not. Well, let's see if our, our super scout, he caused the damage last time. Let's see if our scout can do something. Three, that is a miss. So now we go into the third round of combat. Um, the Thunder Child. Two or lower, miss. 
Doomsday Machine will target the destroyers again. And that is one miss and one hit. All right, we'll go with our destroyers. We need a two or lower miss. And then the scout, last but not least, zero. That is a 10. Um, round four. Thunder Child, come on, you need a two, buddy. Missed. Doomsday Machine. One. Man, this is not looking good. I thought once we got that second uh, second damage on there that we were going to be able to do it, but it's not looking too good. So the Destroyer missed, and then finally the Scout. Oh, man, that Destroyer needed that number, so the Scout misses. Round five, Thunder Child miss, Doomsday Machine, so we'll target here and then here. All right, that's, oh, this is bad. This is looking super bad for Sadie. All right, it's up to the Thunder Child. Oh, miss. Doomsday Machine gets two attacks. This is going to be really bad if we destroy, completely destroy the uh, Green Empire's fleet. So that is one. One damage. Looks At least they have a whole size of three. Miss. Um, Thunder Child, Doomsday Machine. Oh, looks like the Thunder Child has been destroyed. And the Doomsday Machine is victorious. So at the end of combat, all damage is basically gone. Because I get, they, they kind of say that turn lengths are pretty pretty long in between turns. So um, all damage is healed at the end of combat. And then we will go ahead and we can remove Fleet Katana because it has been destroyed. The Katana fleet is destroyed. The battle is over. We will put the Doomsday Machine right there. Actually, I just I'll go ahead and leave that marker over here. This this represents the Doomsday Machine. So the Doomsday Machine is there at the end of the um, at the end of the next turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and destroy that planet. And now this is this is looking real bad. So anyway, I'll get back with you and let you know what else is going on. All right, folks, I have just completed turn eight. And as you saw in the kind of the, what is it, the intro basically to this, this part, you know, um, the Green Empire is kind of hurting right now because, well, that doomsday machine right there is, he wreaked havoc on their home fleet, which is basically no longer. So we're going to, we're going to kind of keep playing things out and see where everything goes. All right, so we'll start out with the Yellow Empire, which is Marty. So we can see here that Marty has kind of pushed closer to the to the green system as one of his fleets moved a little bit closer. What's it, what is his intentions? What 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 does Marty intend on doing? Does he intend on being the savior by taking out this doomsday machine or is he going to swoop on in and just look to take over the green empire when he can strike while the iron's hot we'll see i mean he's built up you know some more infantry got some more infantry here he's pushed out into the center of the center of the galaxy doing some exploration but uh you know green's got enough to worry about or, or sadie has enough to worry about right now with this doomsday machine and now we've got marty who's looking to uh to do an incursion into the green system so we'll we'll see where that goes let's see marty has well we almost got ship size we got close didn't didn't quite spend enough points roll the 14 so some more spending on that defense is up to two so in turn eight he did research defense too, and that is in direct um, response to the Doomsday device because he's like, you know what, that thing, 
And this is kind of where there, there really isn't a fog of war. There's a fog of war when you flip over, when you flip your counters over and, you know, you have fleets and stuff like that. Um, would I really see a doomsday machine that's way over there? Probably not, but, you know, it's just one of those things. So he sees that there's a doomsday machine, so he's, in response, upped his um, defense technology. Um, of course, we got ground combat too. We've got military academy, so basically all of our ships start out at uh, skilled level instead of green. So that'll definitely help in uh, in a combat with the uh, doom ye old doomsday machine. So there's Marty. Sadie, of course, is probably not going to be around much longer because. The first fleet got destroyed in response. Um, she did build some more ships. So we'll go to the production sheet here. It looks like, I want to say that is three cruisers. And what were the destroyers? Destroyers are nine, so two destroyers. Um, let's see here. We tried to, to rush some technology. So ship size three was discovered this turn. Um, attack, oh, attack was discovered this turn, so they pumped a lot of money into technology, so we have attack and defense on any new ships that we build. Um, of course, terraforming one, that was a while ago, and then of course nothing over here. So, so we couldn't build all the ships in one spot, so I think the destroyers were built at this shipyard, and the cruisers were built at this set of shipyards. Of course, there's the doomsday machine. I'll end up doing a random roll to determine where they go. They'll go here, here, or here, because they they always move towards um, a planet, a ship, or I think asteroids. I don't remember. Let me look. Let me look. I have it written down on my little sheet. Planets move to the nearest planet, asteroid, or ship. So I'll do a random roll to decide which one of those three they go to, or they, the, the doomsday device. All right, so that takes care of those two. So we can see yellow's kind of pushing that way and starting to show some aggressive tendencies towards one of the two things over here. We don't know which. And then we got Stevie. Stevie has really pushed out and done a lot of exploration right out here. Um, brought back another alien spacecraft to research. Of course, that was, you know, all divine providence, right? Because he's the, he's the religious fanatic, remember. He's moved some more forces along. We'll call this the frontier right here. So he's repositioned some stuff, moved some things around, kind of, kind of showing a little bit of not necessarily want to say aggression, but posturing along the frontier. Um, he's again, he's going heavy. He's doing the boarding, the land invasion, and movement technologies. So the alien tech did get him um, ship size, which is good because he was kind of hurting in the, the ship, ship room. And of course, the square also means that's the other alien tech that he discovered. Um, now one thing I had been doing that I had been doing wrong is I was buying infantry. I had not um, researched ground technology yet. So I bought infantry and even placed them on the board, but I could, I legally couldn't have done that. So I did research ground technology this turn so that I could have my infantry, which I've already paid for, by the way. So it's, it doesn't really matter because nobody was involved in the combat. So I've got some priorities, ground, um, ship size is a priority, cloaking device is number two on the priority list, boarding technology. Um, I have purchased, let me see here, can we see it? I purchased a transport so I can do some planetary invasions, bought some cruisers, bought a boarding ship so that I can board um, enemy vessels, of course infantry, a couple colonies. Things like that. So Stevie's kind of kind of moving along. But the big highlight, like this past turn, I think. Where is it right here? Yeah, like 25 income in minerals. So that was awesome. And of course the the alien the alien spacecraft that the second one that they found. And then they've got another one that they found out here as well. So Stevie's looking pretty good. His movement is really good, you know. He's 
got the uh, the best movement technology of anybody. And then, of course, we have Beaver with the red. So in response to the, the movement of ships along the frontier, Beaver's moved in. We've got a, a fleet here, the bringers of fear, the bringers of pain. He just built a bunch of ships here. Of course, what Stevie doesn't know is those are decoys, but Stevie doesn't know that. Stevie just sees ships popping up all over the, the frontier. So he, in response to Stevie building things here, Beaver's been building things here. Some of some of them are real. He's built some cruisers. And I want to say... Yeah, some battle cruisers too. Those are the big boys. Well, the biggest ships on the board as of right now anyway. So he's continued to... So these gray cubes are the industrial centers just to, you know, help reduce the amount of counters. The cubes are a little bit smaller. Continuing to colonize, continuing to build MS pipelines everywhere, which are the red cubes. Even going out to here, there's a cube out to there. Our flagship, along with the Millennium Falcon, is out here. And then we discovered another pirate, and of course we bought that pirate off. So now we have two pirates in this, this little expeditionary force out here. And of course he's pushing that way. So, yeah, a lot of stuff's been going on. He's bought some more miners, not because... Well, I mean, we do have all these minerals down here. But we're going to start doing the terraforming so that we can actually um, collect resources from Nebula as well. And just to kind of show his production, I mean, look at what those research... or Not, not the research centers, but the industrial centers. That's a crazy... I mean, uh, produced 148 this last turn. Well, not total because some of that was carry over from the turn before. But, I mean, nobody else is putting up numbers that high. So, Beaver is really kicking butt. And, of course, you know, who knows what's going to happen right here. But they're not worried about that doomsday machine that's way down there. I mean, that's a, that's a long way off. But, anyway, that is turns 7 and 8. So, we will catch you for the next, the next couple turns. All right, thanks for watching.